1950, roughly the beginning of the Cold War between America and Soviet Russia. The real battles between the two nations were not physical, but intellectual, that is, on the topic of foreign intelligence. Espionage was very prevalent during this era, and the American agents that were sent out to spy on their Soviet rivals were considered the most loyal. However, everyone has a price. Many Americans were bribed by Soviets to spy on their own country. This occurred with high-ranking government officials, even CIA agents, like Harold James Nicholson. Harold James Nicholson was born on November 17, 1950, in Woodburn, Oregon, to Betty and Nick Nicholson. While there was little explaining his childhood, he attended Oregon State University for college, starting in 1969. In 1973, he met his future wife, Lori, at Oregon State University. He bet his roommate that he could score a date with her. When he first spoke to her, he started out extremely charming. However, upon remarking on her weight, she stormed off in annoyance. Five days later, he proposed. And the couple became married four months later. After he finished college, Nicholson joined the United States Army, where he rose to the rank of captain and worked in the intelligence unit. In 1978, shortly after his first child Jeremy was born, Nicholson left the army and briefly worked at Hallmark Cards in Kansas City. In 1980, Nicholson was recruited to the CIA as an operations officer specializing in foreign intelligence services. He worked in many different cities and countries throughout the 80s, such as Manila, Bangkok, Cambodia, Tokyo, and Romania. During an argument with his wife, he threatened and accused her of stealing classified American secrets. There is no proof that he brought these accusations up with the CIA, but it may have hinted at what he was up to at the time. He even told her that he had a one and a half inch file full of information about her. His wife divorced him in 1994, but he was able to gain custody of the three children, Jeremy, Star, and Nathan, taking them to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. He tried to extend his stay overseas for a year longer to break to live lavishly, but the CIA turned down his request. Returning to the United States meant that he would have to pay mortgages and alimony for his divorce, which despite his high-ranking government employment, he had trouble paying for. Nicholson's decision to betray his country was triggered by greed and anger towards his agency bosses. In June of 1994, Nicholson exchanged classified CIA information to an official at the Russian embassy in Kuala Lumpur for $12,000, his first act of espionage. Upon returning to America in 1994, he was assigned as an instructor at the CIA Special Training Center at Camp Perry, Virginia, The Farm. He stayed here until 1996 when he was assigned as a branch chief in the Counterterrorism Center at the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Little did he know that the CIA and the FBI were already onto him. No one suspected Nicholson's betrayal until the CIA ran their annual checkup on employees. A checkup on October 16, 1995 involved a polygraph test, also known as a lie detector. The test results raised some unresolved questions about his contact with foreign intelligence agencies. In March 1996, an SVR official requested access to CIA information on Chechnya terrorists. The CIA declined the request. Nicholson asked for the same information in April, claiming it was for a training exercise for rising operatives on the farm. However, he wound up passing along the information to the Russians. In June 1996, Nicholson took a personal leave to Singapore. However, the CIA knew that SVR officials were also in Singapore. The CIA watched Nicholson get into a car with an SVR official. 
Soon after this meeting, there were several transactions of $20,000 into his bank account. The CIA kept a close eye on him, utilizing frequent electronic surveillance and personnel to prove Nicholson was a traitor. Soon after getting the job, Nicholson used numerous searches into the CIA database involving Chechnya and Russia, information which he had no use for under his new position. On August 11th, 1996, Nicholson's computer was inspected and the CIA discovered that he was holding an enormous amount of files that were deleted from the CIA directories, including information about the planting of a CIA officer in Moscow and the positions and names of many CIA assets around the world. To make matters worse for Nicholson, the FBI surveilled him twice in July 1996, sending a postcard to a foreign country under the alias Neville R. Strachey. On the card was information about his new position at the CIA headquarters and about a meeting in Zurich, Switzerland on November 24th. At the Dulles International Airport on November 24th, 1996, Nicholson was on his way to a plane to Zurich, Switzerland to have another transaction with the Russians. However, before boarding the plane, he was apprehended by FBI and CIA officials on charges of espionage and carrying classified government information with intent to sell. It was not looking good for Nicholson. According to his crime, he could have been punished by life imprisonment or the death penalty. However, he met the requirement for some small technicalities that helped him avoid such harsh punishment and receive only 23 years imprisonment at the Federal Correctional Institute in Sheridan, Oregon, near his home. When Nicholson was apprehended in 1996, his youngest son Nathan was only 12 years old. Despite their separation, Nathan visited his father often, trying to keep a close connection with him. When Nathan came to visit him in 2006, he told his father about the financial troubles that the family was facing, and Nicholson decided to use Nathan to sell information to the Russians. Nicholson taught Nathan how to covertly collect money from the Russians, avoid detection by law enforcement, and avoid international currency declarations upon returning to the United States. One monitored phone call between Nicholson and Nathan opened up the FBI's and CIA's first suspicions that Nathan was helping his father. I have a prepaid call from... This is Dad Car Daddy. An inmate at a federal... Hey, hey, Bob. Hey, Nate. I thought I'd call you and see what kind of hours you're keeping these days. Oh, uh, pretty, pretty much the same, I guess. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm on the road at back now. Oh, are you? Okay, okay. Did everything go okay? Yeah, everything went uh, real well. I got a uh, uh, sale for about a five five k. Oh, so business is picking up, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure is. Oh, excellent, excellent. Nathan's first known meeting with the Russians was in Mexico City on December 12, 2006. Immediately after his return, someone deposited a total of $2,900 into his account. However, the money that Nathan was receiving did not correlate with his Pizza Hut salary of $9,000. When Nathan returned from a trip of selling information in Lima, Peru on December 13, 2007, Customs and Border Patrol inspectors searched him and questioned him. During the search, the agents confiscated his journal without his knowledge and secretly made photocopies of it. The journal revealed Nathan's contact information with the Russians in Lima, as well as a plan for another meeting in Cyprus on December 10, 2008. Even worse, one of the items he was carrying was a business card with the address to the Russian Embassy in Mexico City written on it. Nicholson constantly had to encourage Nathan to continue his sales with messages from birthday cards like, You have been brave enough to step into this new, unseen world that is sometimes dangerous, but always fascinating. God leads us on our greatest adventures. Keep looking through your new eyes. Before Nathan could leave for Cyprus, the FBI arrested him in his apartment in December 2008. Nathan later claimed that he was being manipulated by his father to carry out illegal activity. He wound up routing out his father despite their close connection to save himself from extensive jail time. Nicholson and Nathan were charged in Portland, Oregon with two counts of conspiracy, one count of acting as an agent of a foreign government, and four counts of money laundering. Nathan pled guilty and received five years probation and Nicholson received eight years added on to his sentence. Harold James Nicholson is the highest ranking CIA official to ever be charged with espionage. He shocked the American government with his deceitful actions, and he shocked them again when he managed to organize the similar crime with his son. The breach of security alarmed American officials, and as a result, new reform policies were enacted to protect classified information and prevent a similar situation. Training initiatives to enhance and improve counter-espionage efforts have been undertaken 
and Congress has provided increased resources for joint counter-espionage efforts. Harold Nicholson betrayed our country, and the CIA is going to do everything in their power to ensure that no other agent is ever able to cross us again.